This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking multicam editing. More specifically, we're talking about the updates that were added to multicam editing, more specifically to grouped clips inside of the 2018.12 slash 2019 update of Avid Media Composer. Now in this lesson, I wanna go over the changes that have been made to group clips as well as getting in. And I'm gonna show you a little tip slash trick that I actually learned this week, something that's been tucked away from multicam editing inside of Avid Media Composer for a long time that you might not even know about. Now before we get rolling, two things. One, if you're new to multicam editing, I encourage you to check out the show notes for this lesson because I actually did a lesson specifically on multicam editing a little while ago that you can check out before checking out the updates that have come to this version of Avid Media Composer. And secondly, I wanna give a big shout out in this lesson to the team at EditStock who provided the footage for this tutorial. All right, enough of an introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And once we're here, you'll see that we have our different camera angles. Again, this footage coming to us courtesy of our friends at Edit Stock. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these clips. I'm gonna right click on them. I'm gonna navigate down to Group Clips and we're now brought to the Group Clips window. Now, if you're familiar with multicam editing or you've watched my previous lesson, you're familiar with this window. And for me personally, I'm normally selecting one of two options in here. In points, if I happen to have my different camera angles that have a clapboard that I can easily sync something up with, or I'm gonna be using my source time code if my clips actually have matching source time code. Now, purposely for this lesson, I'm not gonna use in points, I'm actually gonna use waveform analysis. Now you'll see why in just a second. I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna let Media Composer prep these clips and then analyze the audio waveforms. And I wanna show you what's actually gonna happen here. Now I'm doing this intentionally because I know that there's actually a mistake that's gonna happen. And this is where the edit groups comes into play. I'm gonna take my grouped clip, I'm gonna select it, drop it into my timeline. Now again, if you're familiar with multicam editing, you know that we can check our clips one of two ways. We can right click on the clip in the timeline to change the angle, to take a look. Or what we can do is simply call up, in our case, our nine split. Now by calling up the nine split, I notice a problem immediately. I selected six clips for this uh, grouped clip and I only see five. However, if I jump down towards the end of the timeline, you'll notice now that my drummer appears, but everybody else disappears. I got a little bit of crossover at some point here. There we go. But obviously, as you can see, the sync is totally off, not giving me what I want. Well, in previous versions of Media Composer, I'd have to delete this group create a new one, you know what the whole process is. In version 2018.12, or I'm just gonna call it 2019 moving forward, we now have the ability to get in and simply edit the group. Now, if you're familiar with collapsing inside of Media Composer, where you take multiple layers and collapse them down into one easy to use clip, it's pretty much the same process. I'm gonna right click on this group and I'm gonna come down to edit group. And what Media Composer is going to do is it's going to expand the group out to show me each one of the different angles. And now what we can do is we can simply come in and I'm gonna select my smart tool and let's just drag this clip all the way back down the timeline here, right to about, eh, sure, I'm just gonna bring it back to there. Now something that's important to keep in mind if you're gonna get in and work this way. Now what's gonna happen when I go back to my timeline is Media Composer is gonna say to me, okay, what would you like to do? Would you like to update this group clip? Would you like to create a new one? Do you not wanna save anything? Or do you want to cancel? Now you might think, oh, okay, perfect. I'm just gonna update this group clip and I'm all set to go. However, you'll notice that something hasn't happened. We haven't gone back to our sequence where that grouped clip is located because you cannot get in and adjust the duration of a grouped clip and update it. You have to create a new grouped clip. 
Now this can lead to a little bit of confusion because then you're gonna start having more and more grouped clips in your bin, which again, like I said, can lead to confusion. You'll see what I mean here. I'm just gonna double click. I'm gonna say, create me a new grouped clip. There's the new grouped clip. If I take this clip, we're just gonna take it now, drop it into my timeline. Let's just turn my smart tool off here. There we go, drop it in. Just remove all that at the end. Check out our nine split. You'll see we now have all of our camera angles set to go, but again, you'll see we're just building up more stuff in our bin, okay? So let me show you how this works in a different scenario. What are we gonna do here is I'm just gonna select all of these here. I'm just gonna delete them in one shot. And I'm gonna take five of the six clips and we're gonna do the exact same process. I'm going to group them together based on the waveform analysis. So the example here is that, let's say hypothetically, you created a group or a bunch of grouped clips only to realize that that one angle that you could never find, you just found. And instead of going back and creating new groups, what you want to do is just add the clip to this group. Again, we're going to drop it in. Again, much like we had done before, right click, edit group. I'm now going to take this shot here, which I've already marked an in point on, and I already know the time code we're going to go in at just to save ourselves a little bit of time here. I'm gonna mark an endpoint there. I'm gonna create a new video track. And to be honest, I've got enough audio for reference. I don't really care about the audio track. I'm now gonna drop this clip in. Now, one thing that's important for me to point out right now is that there's a bug in this version of Media Composer, which is 2019.6. And that is that if you take this clip and drop it in past the end of what is basically the end of our timeline here, and then pull it back so that it doesn't adjust the length of the group clip, Media Composer is going to give you an error and then crash. So what I normally like to do is to come up a little bit short. I'm going to drop it into there and even then just extend it down to the end of the timeline like such. Let's come back here again. We're going to extend this down just so that everyone's pretty much all set to go at the same time. Now let's simply come back up to our sequence, double click. Let's update and you'll now see that we are not all set to go. Why? Again, one, two, three, four, five. Where is our drummer? I know he's there because I just lined him up. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that when you make changes to grouped clips like I just did, you need to make sure you refresh the sequence. I'm now simply going to come down to my refresh sequence, sequences option. I'm going to come down to group edits. I'm going to select it and you'll now see that that clip has appeared inside of that grouped edit. All right, now let's just head up. I'm just going to delete my timeline and my grouped clip here. There we go. Very nice. Let's just clear out our monitor. And I'm going to give you another example of an update to Media Composer in the multicam category. And I'm just going to take this entire clip. It actually doesn't even really matter for the purposes of what we're doing. Let's just make sure here. And I'm just going to leave video turned off. I'm just going to grab a couple of clips that we're going to assume are already sunk up. We've gone in, marked in and out points, because I know a lot of people like to line up clips in this method here. Okay, let's just come down to, yeah, sure, we'll just come down to wherever that clip goes to. Again, no audio, and I'm going to do one more track here. Okay, what we now have the ability to do with all of these layered tracks inside of our sequence is to make a grouped clip right from our timeline, okay? All I'm gonna do is with the timeline here, with the composer window selected, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna come down to create group. Now you're gonna notice that it doesn't ask me what's the time code you're using, you know, what are you gonna use waveforms? Nope, it took everything exactly the way that it was and it created a grouped clip for me. I'm now going to basically take that grouped clip and drop it right over top of all of the clips that are currently in my timeline. And now I'm going to come to show you my nine split. And you'll see now that we now have those three clips set up as a multicam, all set to go. All right, now a couple other things that I do want to mention before wrapping up this lesson. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come down here. I'm just going to delete all of that again. Let's just select. I'm just going to go with the five clips that make up our multi group here. I'm going to come down to group clips again by waveform. I probably should have just kept this in my bin so I didn't have to do this, you know, three times in a row, but the process is relatively quick. Now, I know one question that I always get emailed about when I'm doing these type of lessons is, Kev, what is the quality of the footage that you are working with? I know you're probably working with, you know, 
the highest quality HD footage, you know, when you've got six streams of HD all playing back at the same time. I got to be honest with you, I'm using an external USB drive and with my six clips of HD, it was choking the drive to death. So what I did is I actually compressed this footage down to DNX HD 36 because to be honest, in a lot of cases, you're dealing with reams of footage when you're doing music videos. So I normally just like to work at DNX 36, then go back, relink once I've committed my multicam edit so that I only have the high res footage that I need in my timeline. Okay, let's just come over here. I'm just gonna take this clip. I'm gonna drop it into my timeline and we're gonna call up my, in this case, five split. Now, the first thing that I wanna point out that I'm sure you're probably already aware of, again, if you do a lot of multicam editing, if not, I'm just gonna press Command on the Mac, Control on Windows, and you'll notice that as soon as I do, what's now happened is that I've been shown which clip each one of these different angles actually is. So if I was to get in and rename these, those names would appear at the bottom of each one of those clips, but, that's not the little sort of secret tucked away thing that I never knew about because it's always something I complained about and then somebody actually showed this to me. So you can teach an old dog new tricks, which is what I normally find myself doing is mapping multi-cam keys to my keyboard. So because normally, you know, I like to have one, two, three, four, five, four, one, two, three, four, five, I'll map that to my keyboard. However, those keys or those multi-cam camera angles are actually already mapped to the keypad on your keyboard. So basically on the right hand side, that keypad you have there, don't look at the numbers. Don't look at one, two, three, four, five, six. Look at seven, eight, and nine to be angle seven, eight, nine. Angle four, five, six. Angle one, two, three. Now I'm referring to those by the actual number they are on the numeric pad. So if I was to come back now, I'm just gonna turn off the audio. I'm just gonna play this. And if I was to start punching in edits right here, you'll see, there we go. I haven't mapped any keyboard shortcuts to these keys. They're already all set to go right out of the box. All right, so let's wrap this up by talking about some additional changes that have been made to group clips inside of the 2018.12 slash 2019 update of Avid Media Composer. One thing that I love is the fact that we can now work with mixed rate clips inside of a grouped clip, meaning if you have seven clips that were all shot at 2398 and that one pesky clip that was shot at 1080i 2997, don't worry, you can actually add that 1080i clip in with all those 2398 clips to create a proper grouped clip for you to do your multi-cam edits with. Now, you remember before I was doing some segment dragging inside of group mode. What's important to keep in mind is that you'll notice that the monitor will always display the frame that's located under the blue bar. Mixed rate groups sometimes can cause errors when you are committing multi-cam edits so keep that in mind. What's also very cool is that groups from any project type can be opened in any other project type, meaning that if you have a group clip that was created at 1080i, you can simply take that over to a 2398 project, open it up no problem, and work with it much like you would created it inside of that project. And last but certainly not least, if you're sending sequences from one project type to another, again, one frame rate to another, you don't need to commit those multicam edits like you had to previously. You can move them freely back and forth between those projects, open them up, and do multicam in any type of project or any type of frame rate that you might need to do it in. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris Effects, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.